Hello guys and gals and welcome to another episode of Unique Items. Today we're going to be talking about the unique item, the Blood Crescent Scimitar. The Blood Crescent Scimitar is a pretty powerful low-level sword, and if you happen to come across one, it might be worth hanging on to for your uh, low-level adventures. Um, let's go over the sword together. We're going to upgrade it, we're going to play around with it, and we're going to see what it could potentially be good for. Um, so right off the bat, you'll notice that it has a relatively low damage um, of 3 to 10. Uh, it has a durability of 22 to 22, which uh, will make it probably a little bit uh, bad for maybe like a really fast zealer. Um, it has a dexterity requirement of only 21 with no strength requirement and only a level requirement of level 7. Um, at level 7, 3 to 10 is actually just fine. Um, it has an extremely fast attack speed because, of course, it is a scimitar. Scimitars tend to have very, very fast attack speeds anyway. Um, and it also has 15% increased attack speed as well, which means this is going to be faster even than you think. It has uh, a 60 to 80% enhanced damage, so it does vary a little bit. But uh, honestly, the enhanced damage doesn't really make that much of a difference at level 7. Maybe if you were going to upgrade it, um, it would make a difference. But at level 7, that... 20% variance on the enhanced damage might equal maybe like one like one damage on the top end. Um, it does have 15% lifesteal, which is a pretty massive amount, uh, but unfortunately due to the rather low damage of the weapon, 15% uh, of how much you're doing isn't really a whole lot. Um, it is going to be a rather nice amount of lifesteal, don't get me wrong, but it's not massive like you would think. Um, a lot of the times with these weapons, when they have really high lifesteal numbers, but relatively low damage numbers, um, it kind of balances out. Uh, like, for instance, there's a staff, uh, specifically, that has 100% mana leech, but the amount of damage that the staff does is, like, 8. And so, of course, 100% of 8 is 8, and it's not really a lot of mana steal per hit. Um... You also have 33% chance of open wounds on here. Now, open wounds is a damage effect that will actually um, proc on a target for 8 seconds, and uh, the amount of damage that it does is actually directly proportional to your level. So at level 7, it's obviously going to be rather low damage, but as you level up, the damage will actually increase with you. And, uh, and open wounds is a great effect because it prevents monster regeneration. Um, it is especially useful on ubers because... Preventing monster regeneration on Ubers is very important because they can regenerate so quickly. Uh, we also have plus 15 to life, which is a pretty massive amount of life at level 7. And in general, just just <clears throat> at level 7, you don't really have a lot of life anyway. So uh, definitely nice to have 15 life on this. Uh, we also have all resistances 15, which in the grand scheme of things isn't really a massive amount of resistances. But at level 7, when you put this on, 15 all res is actually pretty darn sweet. Uh, most of the monsters in normal difficulty don't hit that hard anyway, and 15 all res can actually be a pretty huge chunk of damage reduction uh, versus monsters that are only outputting maybe like 5 to 10 damage anyway. Uh, we also have plus 4 light radius on this, which, uh, which is always a stat that they throw in there. Uh, most people don't care about light radius, and uh, even if they had negative 100 light radius, they probably still wouldn't care. Uh, <laughs> So, interesting. Uh, we also have the Ethereal version, which is 5 to 16 damage. Uh, so, as you can see, uh, quite a nice little bump there in damage. Uh, not only the bottom end, but also the top end by quite a margin. And, uh, of course, the Ethereal version would eventually break. But, if you did have an Ethereal Blood Crescent Scimitar at level 7, you're probably going to out-level it pretty quickly. And, quite honestly, I would just use the Blood Crescent Scimitar at level 7 until it broke. And then I would swap to something else. Um, it could definitely be a very, very nice weapon for a lower level character. Now what I would like to do is upgrade these, and uh, we're going to take a look and see how they upgrade and whether or not they are good to upgrade. Uh, so let me move myself out of the way so we can see what we're doing. So you're going to need a Ral, a Soul Rune, and a Perfect Emerald to do this. And uh, it's going to upgrade from a Blood Crescent Scimitar of 3 to 10, 21 dex, and level 7 to a Blood Crescent Cutlass of 14 to 37, uh, 52 dex, 25 strength, and level 30. Now, quite honestly, that's not a bad upgrade. Um, at level 30, 14 to 37 is enough damage that uh, you could probably get away with that. And uh, quite honestly, the lifesteal, the open wounds, and the resistances could certainly come in handy. Uh, level 30 isn't really quite nightmare difficulty. Uh, usually by the time you're level 30, you're in Act 4 or Act 5. 
uh, depending on how you know thoroughly you cleared the zones. And um, I could totally see this being a, a viable option if you didn't have anything better for a little while until you got to a nightmare difficulty, in which case you'd probably want to start looking to upgrade this to a different item. Um, the relatively fast speed combined with the open wounds could potentially make this a decent uh, choice for a smiter as well, just so that you have the open wounds and the, the fast attack speed. The downside to this is that as a smiter, it pulls durability from your weapon, not from your shield, so it will break relatively quickly. Uh, let's check out the ethereal version, and uh, the ethereal version could upgrade as well. But unfortunately, uh, the ethereal version is not going to be much use to a, um, a melee character, although it could potentially be useful for the new Frenzy Barbarian. Uh, we have 5 to 16 damage, 11 dexterity, and level 7. And this upgrades to 21 to 55, not bad. 42 dex, 15 strength, level 30. Uh, now, of course, these can be uh, socketed at Larzik if you wanted to. I'm not really sure why you would waste a socket on these. Um, but, uh, but you know, maybe, maybe you're just, you got sockets to spare. So maybe that's, maybe that's the case. All right, so let's upgrade this one more time to the Elite version because I love to do that. So to do that, we're going to need Pull Runes, we're going to need Lum Runes, and we're going to need two more Perfect Emeralds. And uh, this is going to get us to the Elite version. And uh, we'll see what this uh, what this does for this weapon. I don't think this is going to be a good upgrade, but uh, let's do it anyway. Uh, that's what this series is about, right? We want to take a look. We want to see. Sometimes I'm surprised. Sometimes I make the upgrade and I'm like, this is going to be terrible. And then I upgrade and it's like, that one actually wasn't so bad. <laughs> All right. So Paul Lum and Perfect Emerald. And we're going to go from the Blood Crescent Cutlass. My mustache is itchy. Uh, 14 to 37, 52 dexterity, 25 strength, level 30. To 46 to 82, 95 dexterity, 138 strength, and level 57. Now, the level requirement didn't go up so high that that would be um, untenable. But I do believe that 46 to 82 is a little too low on damage. Um, yeah, a little bit too low. I, I do kind of like the upgrade, but the strength... And the dex really did go up really high. Um, the level requirement being level 57 does make it moderately okay. But at the same time, it's it's just not enough damage. Uh, let's check out the ethereal version, though. So the ethereal version is going to go from 21 to 55 damage, 42 dex, 15 strength, level 30, to 70 to 124, 85 dex, 128 strength, level 57. And that's a little bit better, and uh, and I could totally see putting that maybe on like a Frenzy Barb Merc. Um, I don't think I would probably put a Zod Rune in there, but if you were going to use it as an actual weapon, you would have to put a Zod Rune in there to make it uh, work. And um, I don't really think that's a good choice. <laughs> uh, there is a couple other Scimitars which are very similar to the Blood Crescent, um, like the Gin Slayer, and, um, and there's another one. Uh, that probably would make a better choice for this particular type of build if you wanted to go with like a symmetry build. Maybe you, maybe you wanted to pretend to be um, uh, what's his name, uh, Drizzt's Do Erden, who uses the the dual symmetries or whatever with the uh, with the two was an icing blink and I can't even remember the names of them for some reason. Good job pulling up a reference and you can't even remember the names. Um, all in all, I do think that uh, the Blood Crescent Scimitar is a very nice level 7 sword and totally worth hanging on to if you want to level up your characters. Um, as a level 30 weapon, it might be okay, um, especially since Ral and Soul Runes are not ridiculously hard to come by. So, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. Um, I don't think upgrading it to the Elite version is worth it, and I definitely wouldn't put a Zod Rune in there. <laughs> Um, if you wanted to find this particular item, uh, let's go take, go take a look over on Silos Spen, which is uh, where I like to look up drop chances. And uh, we're going to take a look real quick, and we're going to see um, where you could potentially find this if you wanted to just hunt one down. Um, a lot of the times, people like to hunt down very specific items, and uh, you know, maybe you just want to figure out exactly where this drops so you can just spend some time trying to find it. It's a relatively low-level item, so let's assume 0% magic find. That's what I want to do with this. Uh, let's also assume normal difficulty, because we're probably a low-level character who is looking for this item. And um, let's go ahead and do uniques, and then we're going to do Blood Crescent Scimitar. 
Um, and we're going to see what kind of monsters we could farm to try and get our hands on a Blood Crescent. Alright, so here's our probability, and let's go to Super Uniques first. Um, it looks like the Cow King in Normal, which is way out of reach for a level 7 character. Uh, looks like this one right here, these two. Uh, Pit Spawn Foul Dog in Jail Level 2 has a 1 in 1045 chance of dropping this item. That's actually not bad. And if you put a little bit of Magic Find on, I'm sure that'll go down. Like, let's say you could get, like, 50% Magic Find. Let's, uh, let's check that out. So yeah, 50% magic find brings that down to 1 in 741, which is certainly not terrible. Uh, the smith also has a pretty decent chance, who's also something that you could farm around level 7. Um, that's uh, 1 in 1214. And even the countess in normal difficulty, uh, 1 in 1303, not bad. Uh, Bone ash in the cathedral, 1 in 1545. And, uh, and uh, some pretty good choices here in normal difficulty in uh, Act 1 that you could possibly farm a couple times to see if you could get your hands on that item. Uh, let's also take a look at the bosses in normal difficulty. Does Andariel have a good chance? Let's see. Andariel is a 1 in 215. That's not bad at all. So, uh, so Andariel in normal difficulty along with those super uniques I was just talking about might be a good choice to farm this if you really wanted to. I don't really um, think that most people go out of their way to find this item. But, uh, you know, if you were a brand new ladder character, which, by the way, we just found out that ladder starts on April 28th and 2.4 will be launching on April 14th. So uh, put that in your calendars. And um, if you were doing a brand new ladder character, um, something like a Blood Crescent Scimitar could help you out for quite some time until you manage to get yourself some better equipment. Um, I always tell people, never underestimate a good low-level unique, um, especially when you are a brand new character and you have nothing better. Those uniques will carry you further than you think, and, uh, and they will be useful to you, and not only to you, but to other people who are also in your group, uh, even when you no longer need the item. Um, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, and uh, stay tuned because I've got a lot of videos coming up um, on uh, skills. I've got a lot of videos coming up on uh, unique items, and uh, and I also have some plans for some theory craft videos, which uh, which I'm hoping I can start as soon as 2.4 starts. So uh, when when April 14th starts and 2.4 launches, I'll probably be doing a bunch of theory craft videos on uh, on new builds and things like that. Um, also. Stay tuned for the patch notes. I'm sure that eventually they will release the 2.4 patch notes, and we'll be going over those together as well. Um, thanks for watching, and uh, keep watching.